This is the story of the Danaids. Our story starts with twin brothers Danaeus and Aegyptus. These two were destined to inherit great power from their father Belus. After Belus' death, Danaeus became king of Libya, and Aegyptus became king of Arabia. These two kings are constantly trying to get the other's kingdom. Amazingly, both brothers each had 50 children of their own, Aegyptus having only sons and Danaeus having only daughters. The 50 women were named Danaeids. Once his sons were of age, Aegyptus planned to have each of his sons married to the Danaeids. This way, he could vicariously rule his brother's land of Libya. Fully aware of Aegyptus' plan to have their children married, Danaeus seeks the counsel of the gods. They advise him to give his brother rule of his land and to sail to Argos with his daughters. There, they would be sure to live in peace. And Argos they are accepted. Some stories even say that Danaeus became king of Argos for a while, but their peace was fleeting. As the Danaeids' cousins were still after their hands in marriage, the suitors showed up to Argos and demanded the woman, but the Argives refused, saying that no woman should be married against their will. Somehow or another, the suitors get their way, and the daughters are to be married to them. None of the Danaids, however, had a change of heart. Both them and their father were still rather opposed to the unions, so much so that the Danaeus gave each of his daughters a dagger to kill their newly wed husband in their sleep. Every daughter did follow through with the plan, except Hypermenestra, who woke her husband, Lynceus, and helped him flee. For her treachery, Hypermenestra is jailed by her father. Some say that she eventually came to be with Lynceus again, and that they conceived the great-grandfather of Perseus. Every rendition of this story never fails to tell of the punishment of Hypermenestra's sisters. For their murdering of their husbands, the 49 sisters were to fill a bowl with water from an underworld river. This was an internal labor because the bowl which they are tasked with filling as a hole at its base. Every time they returned from the river, the bowl was empty.